The reason I want a mansion in London is so I can have a secret society where we plot to overtake all the European countries and Bro, and just stick to boobies and right. Like, Complaining about good. politics. Like, that's all we need as human beings. And TVs during an orgy. You can that's watch fine. TV during an orgy. That's you, all we want. You, you gotta take a break from the <laughs> orgy. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Hannah Hillam. And I'm Kava Taharian. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we had an interesting uh, time this morning before we started recording. Usually, Hannah comes in, as you might expect, um, <laughs> frantic. In her, in frantic in her pig pen like state with like you know, <laughs> swirl lines everywhere. Uh, this morning she was like, no, I'm good. Let's get ready to record. And I was like, this doesn't feel right. And no. thankfully the universe was like, no, we need to ruin everything first before you guys start yeah. recording, even though everybody was calm. So now and we're Can I tell you something? I feel more Absolutely. comfortable now. I feel good. more yeah. comfortable. I, I was needed worried. like chaos. Like things were too calm and it really yeah. worried me. I was I like, really worried. I like how you were like, are you going to kill yourself because you're too happy? <laughs> uh, but yeah, welcome. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. Uh, just quick story before we start. Speaking oh. of the real being off, I thought you would laugh at this. That uh, okay. I had a really cool fountain pen, that, oh. uh, which was purchased for me that I really liked. And um, I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I hadn't used it for a little bit. And so I think the nib dried out a little bit. Yeah. And so I was trying to replace the, the ink in the inside because oh. I was like, oh, what's going on back and forth? Immediately just like <laughs> ruined my favorite pair of shorts because I am no. that guy that wears like one pair of shorts every day in the summertime oh, and dude. you have to wash it. I'm that person with pants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, covered in black ink, ruined. However. You are an artist. No, not just. Oh, I don't care about that. I don't actually like wearing dirty clothes. That's not my style. Oh, no, I do. See, I'm I down know. with it. Pig pen. <laughs> Yeah, but because I am, uh, you know, over 40, I'm like, well, I had thought ahead and purchased another pair of shorts because I was like, <laughs> I like these shorts. I should buy another pair just in case. Are they from Costco? Of, of course they are. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you how I went to Costco the other day wearing all Costco clothes without realizing it? That's like, like, that's incredible. I'm here. I'm on yeah. a slow descent to midlife. You know, it's fine. No, you got to listen to Shang Wang. Did you ever see his stand up where he's just like, oh, that's when the second half of your life begins. <laughs> when you wear Costco. Yeah. <laughs> I fully believe in that. Anyway. Oh, um, I do too. It had a happy uh, ending. Unfortunately, I don't, I now don't have a second backup pair of shorts. So I'm well, going to try and go and buy another pair of fits. I think you might sale. need to go to Costco. I think I'm going to go. Yeah. I think you need to do that. I think you need to buy some hot dog too. Some hot dog. Always hot, singular. <laughs> just some hot dog. Some hot dog. Just part of one hot dog. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, um, that I'm was my morning. I thought it. you would laugh at it. Yeah, let's do it. I think. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I Did I not laugh week. enough? No. <laughs> sorry, I'm. I'm trying to make this chaos. I don't know how <laughs> okay, to not. Okay, good. It's no, too it's calm. Good. It's too calm. <sighs> so yeah, I'm ready. If you are. Yeah, I'm absolutely ready. I went first last week. I believe it is All your right. turn to go first this week. Words. Words just suck. <laughs> okay? All right. So my tab this week is an article from grapevine.is, which is a, it's called the Reykjavik Grapevine, and it's a newspaper in Iceland. And it is, mm -hmm. the title of it is The Literary Mystery of the Icelandic Dracula. And oh. I, yes. So I was, a funny story. Yeah. So the Icelandic Dracula was pretty bonkers. Uh and I was like, oh, I should dress up. You know, I got to make myself look undead. And I started thinking, and I was like, I'll just come as I usually come. Yeah, and you're like I, all I ready to go. <laughs> I'm like, I'm already, I already look like a Dracula lady. I, you know, I, my Perfect. mom used to be like, Hannah, Hannah, you look dead. Put some color on your face. You look dead. So yeah, mom, it's serving me well now. <laughs> the, Isl the Icelandic Dracula. I say Icelandic Dracula because it is different. We're going to start at 2014. All right. And a dude, of course, I don't have his name. Uh, let's just Hold give on. him a name. What's ha he's from Iceland? Ivan. That's a Russian name. Ivan. Whatever. His name His name's J J Jimmy. <laughs> the only Jimmy. Icelandic name I know is Bjork. That's it. I don't know any other Icelandic that is... names. Well, you're but... going to hear a few more. So okay. a translator was looking through this manuscript in 2014, and he realized he was like, this is says this is the translation for the uh, for Dracula in Icelandic, but this isn't the same story. Mm -hmm. And he discovered that for the past 100 years, Iceland has had a completely different story <laughs> than, 
than everyone else. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and it's... It, and so he was like, what? And, and so then we, they get going, you know, they're like, oh, we have to figure out how to translate this to English. I, I already love this. It's just a guy that oh. was hired to be the translator clearly didn't speak English oh, yeah. or whatever language he was translating it from. He just oh, made he it did. up and no one no. noticed for a hundred years. He spoke <laughs> English, but he didn't think Dracula was good as it was. So this goes back to 1901, right? And oh, Dracula, Dracula has been out for about four years, written by Bram Stoker. And... Uh, It's kind of gained popularity pretty quickly. It was very popular. Mm -hmm. People loved Mm -hmm. it. And it still is popular. It's been made into films like 30 plus times. Are you familiar with the story? I mean, I know the most, uh, the adaptation I'm most familiar with is the Coppola one from 1991. It's literally called Bram Stoker's Dracula. Have you you seen that one? No. No. Oh, okay. (laughs) I'm assuming because it's called Bram Stoker's Dracula that it's the most accurate to the book because he decided to put the author's name on top of the film, like ab- above the credits, but I have no idea. I love that movie, by the way. Is it good? Uh, I gotta like, listen. I mean, it's watch. It's really, uh, just as a sidebar, it was yeah. like, it, it was early 90s and Coppola was like, oh, I want to make this movie in a way that sort of feels like the 19, like 20s and 30s, oh, like before, cool. like, like when it was like all in camera effects. So it sort of has yeah. this old timey effect. And then, um, What's her name? I think that was his first collaboration with, uh, I believe her name was Aiko Ishioko, which was, she was a very famous costume designer who just did these Ooh, incredible cool. costumes, incredible costuming. Uh, I gotta watch it. Deep blood red. Actually, the oh. opening, the opening of that film is something that I saw when I was like, I don't know, 13, 14. Too young. And then I was like, this is amazing. I don't know. Some people think it's like cheesy and kind of like overly operatic, but that's, I like that, that is stuff. the character, I think. Yeah. And it fits with the actual story, which is like a soap opera, you know? It's like vi- this- yeah. Oh, no, it's very yeah. soap opera and it made me understand. I'm like, oh, this is because Dracula's it's really a love story is what it is. So this guy. I, I'm, fr- I'm actually I, sorry. I should just say I'm more familiar with the characters than I am with actually the original story. That's how I, I was too. I'll just say that. Yeah. Because they've become these like. Like yeah, Van Helsing solid, and Renfield right. and all this stuff. Renfield. Yeah. Which is a fun and, movie, by the way. It was more goofy. I, I liked it more than there's I thought. So many, the Nic- there's so many. The Nicolas many. Cage one that came out a couple years ago. Oh, it's okay. It's really insane and kind of funny. Anyway, I got really excited. You asked me about like Dracula and I was like, let me tell oh, you yeah. about 37,000 different That's movies that I've seen. That's why I asked. Like, yes. Uh, so it was translated and I should say, quote unquote, translated. <laughs> translated. In 1901 by a dude named Valdemar uh, Osmondson. And Lord Voldemort. A, well, exactly. I heard it. I was like, Voldemort? <laughs> Voldemar Osmundson was a, a newspaper owner in uh-huh. um, Iceland, and he had his own newspaper. So he was like, oh, this story's kind of cool. I'm going to start translating it and then putting it into my own newspaper in like, <laughs> like serializing <laughs> it. Serializing yeah. it. And so if you're not familiar with like the story of Dracula, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. I'm going to just kind of go over it really quick. And if yeah. it does, if it goes a little long, we can stick my summary and patreon or something but the story of dracula it was written by uh bram stoker in 1897 Mm -hmm. and he's did you know he was irish anglo irish i don't think i knew anything about bram stoker he's like some he and he worked for like a theater he was just like a theater guy not an actor like administrative anyway he wrote the gothic horror novel dracula in 1897 um Mm -hmm. and it is interesting in that it's told through the letters, newspapers, telegrams, and other ephemera. So it's not like a linear story. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's it was kind of cool for its time. He was messing around with it a little bit. Yeah, genre. And so to summarize the plot, for those who don't know, it's about this young English real estate agent slash solicitor named Jonathan Harker, who mm-hmm. goes to Transylvania to help his client, Dracula, mm-hmm. buy a mansion in England because Dracula needs more people to drink blood from. And uh, he would like to go to England to do that. And Jonathan's an idiot, though, because he's like, the whole, all the peasants are like, don't go, don't do it. And he's like, well, I don't care. And he just, just gets attacked by wolves. And he's like, that's not a, that's not a, that's not foreshadowing. I just need to keep going to this castle. And he, he gets up there. So and no one remembers if you got attacked by wolves. All no they remember one. is your legacy, how much money you had in crypto. <laughs> yes. and all, like, <laughs> Lines going up on the whatever stock market. Yeah. Big line, big money. Diamond hands. Diamond. <laughs> We yep, hodl, hodl. Uh He just wanted to hodl, dude. That's all he wanted. He wanted to. Anyway, so he gets up there and Dracula, the crypto bro. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that would be horrific. Can you imagine how unbearable would Dracula be if he was also a crypto bro? Listen, I could see it. He's got wealth from a long, long time ago. Yeah. So I could see him reinvesting it in crypto. 
so Jonathan gets to the castle and he's like, this place is nuts. Also, this mm-hmm. Dracula guy seems fine. Yeah. And he soon realizes, because he seems polite. And he's like, this guy's an ancient weirdo, but whatever. And he realizes soon that he's in deep danger because he watches Dracula just climb up the wall like a lizard. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. normal things. And he's like, maybe that's what they do it in Transylvania, but they don't. He's, he's a like, drag- I don't want to be culturally disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, he's like, maybe they just climb walls like lizards he's here. He's like, listen, I- I'm here to listen, okay? I'm not here to judge other cultures. <laughs> and to sell you a mansion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he ends up freaking out because like, then these three hot vampire ladies are like mm-hmm. seducing him. And he's like, yeah. oh, no, I have a fiance. You yeah. know. That's the problem we all run into at least once. And he uh, tries to just crawl out a window and escape. And he mm-hmm. does. And he ends up out of his mind in a Budapest hospital. So meanwhile, Dracula goes to England, right? Right. And he starts terrorizing this woman, Lucy. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Lucille? Yeah, yeah. Lucy. I think Lucille Bluth, yes. Yeah, Lucille Bluth is there. And then um, Mina, who's Jonathan's fiance, is her friend. And Lucy's like, I keep getting proposed to. And I wish I could just marry mm-hmm. all of them. I want yeah. to be. I want it to be a poly- pretty much p- p- talking about wanting to be polyamorous, yeah, which was crazy yeah. for the time. And she can't figure out who to marry, and then she gets all sick. And mm-hmm. Mina's like, "Oh no!" And then she hears that her fiance is like insane in a hospital, and so she goes to you know wherever he is, Budapest. So Dracula gets on a boat and moves to England, and he it, this, this boat he like slowly kills everyone on board because duh, yeah. he can't help it except for the captain is- who he. <laughs> What? I was going to say, which is another movie that came out a couple years ago that's all really? about like, the voyage of the ship. Yeah. <laughs> oh I forget. I The name is escaping me right Demeter. now, but I'm meaning to watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I saw he, parts of it. I was like, this is metal as shit. I don't know. Oh, I, yeah. I, it's been like in my queue to watch at some point. I, I haven't watched it yet, but The I'm voyage is like, it's yeah. like so creepy on its own because he's uh-huh. slowly picking off people on the boat yeah. and everyone's freaking out. Yeah. It's like a whole horror movie on its, it's own. It's classic horror structure. Yeah. yeah absolutely. The last person on the boat is the captain who he ties to the, to the, um, the mast steering wheel, (laughs) steering wheel. (laughs) And then he turns into a wolf because Dracula is also a shapeshifter. I don't know if you knew this. Dracula is so awesome. He is just like, yes. (laughs) If we ever do Kumatab again, I know who's winning. Dracula's going to win everything. He's cool as shit. Except the Michelin Man doesn't have blood, so we'll see. It's true. Uh, God, that's I really for want later. you to watch the Coppola version now because okay. because most of the stuff you've talked about is in there. Oh, sorry. You're just like uh, no. I mean, like it's. I'm like I'm excited because I'm remembering it from the oh, film. Okay, all right. So I'm just like, yeah, that part was cool, and then that was awesome, and then that yeah. shit was crazy. Like it's it's really cool. I'm glad I'm following the plot, and they did a good job. Uh, so the boat gets there, and the captain's the only one alive, and mm-hmm. Dracula turns into a like a wolf thing wolf, a yeah. dark thing and jumps off the boat and can be seen like lurking in graveyards and lucy mina's friend starts going mm-hmm. nuts and feeling super sick and one of her fiancés <laughs> is a doctor <laughs> uh-huh. and the other one's an american millionaire and uh-huh. the other one's just some guy and the doctor is like we gotta look at her what's going on because she starts to like show these like yeah the a bite, bite mark. marks yeah she starts sleepwalking which mm-hmm. is Weird because in the book they blame it on her dad being a slut. <laughs> on her dad being a slut? Yeah, they're like her That's dad cool. slept around That's like a pro- lot. Progressive. <laughs> I know. They're slut Still. shaming the man. Good for them. Good they're for them. They're slut shaming the dad. Yeah. That's good. And then they're like, yeah, her dad was a slu- uh, slut, and uh, Just... now genetically she's insane. So totally because Victorians the, she famously transfers from <laughs> the dad sluttiness <laughs> to being um, insane to being a woman so. slut. Yes, no, that's yeah. how it goes. That's that's what science would tell us back yeah. in the day. Yes, hundred percent. So she ends up sleepwalking into cemeteries and seeing this black dog and and Mina. You know they they lay her down and put garlic all over the room and they're like, you know, we, there's a Dracula on the loose. Actually, that's not what they say, but you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> they're like, it's Dracula in time. It's like the, the titular line game. <laughs> <laughs> it's Morbin time. It's, it's <laughs> Dracula in time. Thing? No, I think, maybe. It was when Morbius, the terrible Jared Leto movie came out. And then, oh, yes, uh, I it, Like, no that. one saw it. And then there was this social media campaign where everybody was like, oh, man, I wish that we could see that movie and just have him. Because my favorite line was like, it's Morbin time. <laughs> It was this bullshit thing they came up with, and somebody at the studio was like, "Yeah, okay, we should re-release." It was a total disaster. Of course, it's like you the, can't. The greatest win of of collective bullying of studios. Uh, Besides of the Sonic memory. Sonic's teeth. Yeah, yeah, that one's a good one. too. That one's a good one, and that was yeah. that worked well. Anyway, yeah. Lucy is like, "Ooh, so sick," and the doctor's like, 
I still want to marry you and I'm going to help you. Yeah. And then he's like, I got to ask my, my old friend Van Helsing for help because this looks mm-hmm. like a job for a vampire hunter. Yeah. And Hugh Jackman shows up. Hugh Jackman shows up and he's also Australian, turns yeah. out. Right. <laughs> I did know that one. <laughs> I did know that one. I'm assuming uh, you've not seen the Van Helsing starring Hugh Jackman. That's why I, I actually have. Up. You have seen that one. Yes. Okay. That, I saw it in the theater. I thought it in the theaters. They're like, bro, Van Helsing's like, bro, she is a vampire. And so, and everyone's like, whatever. No, she's not. Because she dies, right? The yeah. wolf comes back and kills her. And then uh, everyone's like, she's no, she's not a vampire. And Van Helsing's like, yes, she absolutely is. Look. And they look and she's just like eating it, like sucking the blood out of a kid. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's definitely not a dead yeah. person. It's because um, her dad's a slut. That's why. It has nothing to do that. with her being a vampire. Daughter of a slut. Yeah. <laughs> Sluts are immortal. I just want a shirt that says like slut dad or something that I could wear. <laughs> dad slut. Dad I'm slut. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's conjuring up the wrong kind of image now. <laughs> no, not at all. Slut daddy? I don't know. <laughs> slut <laughs> daddy slut. Daddy slut? I'll, I guess I'm thinking of, of Leather good. Daddy. Again, yeah. it's all come back to Arrested Development. Arrested it's Development, like, oh, yeah. I want something that says Leather Daddy, but it's like, I want something that says Slut Daddy. Slut Daddy. <laughs> Victorian Slut Daddy, specifically. You... It's very different. Just shorts. Just wear the shorts with the ink on them. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, that's a sloppy, messy, horrible Slug man. His legs. We He's a disaster. His legs. <laughs> so, uh, remember how Mina went to Budapest to help Jonathan? Yeah, to break They him come out. back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they come back and they're like, oh, you definitely like cut Lucy's head off because that's what they had to do. Ben Helsing's yeah. like, stab her in yeah. the heart, chop yeah. her head off and fill her mouth with garlic, you know, as is tradition. Mm-hmm. And Mina, are like, Mina and Jonathan are like, oh, that's, it's Dracula. And everyone's like, yeah. Jonathan, you can't sell property to murderers, immortal mm. murderers, especially. And now yeah. we have to destroy him before he kills Mina, too, because he starts to like Sorry. get in Mina's head. <laughs> You have to wear the cone of shame today for the, the for the real estate <laughs> agency. You do not get to come to the pizza party on Friday because you sold to an immortal murderer. <laughs> you do not get the weekly bonus of an extra set of steak knives. There is no Christmas bonus. Yep. There's no Christmas raffle. Nothing. Nothing for you, Jonathan. Coffee is for closers and you are not yeah. a good closer. No. In fact, you're the worst real estate agent England's ever yeah. seen. You so- call yourself a salesman, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm just quoting all movies I today. Don't. Anyway, continue. I actually knew that one, I think. Now they're all like, we got to kill him. And so they all, f- Dracula runs away. And he's like, ooh, 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 can I get out of here? Uh-oh, someone <laughs> caught <Oopsie>. me. <laughs> I got to go home. Sorry. Um, so- I'm sorry. And he's like, I don't know. Like-, like blood coming out of his <laughs> yeah. mouth the entire or- time. Who, <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah. Little old me. He's just gaslighting everybody. Just he's like me never. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> he runs away back to his Transylvania castle, and they all follow. And then they're like, they you know they they ambush him, they get him, they cut his head off, they kill him, and Mina is no longer sick with vampirism or whatever. And everyone lives happily ever after, except one of the fiancés of Lucy gets killed in the fight, and it was the right. American millionaire. Yeah. So we are disposable in this story. Yeah. Um, Thanks a lot, uh, anti-American. So. That's the story. Right. In a nutshell ish, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh what's his name? Valdemar. Lord is Voldemort, like, right. Is like, you know, I think this might need way more boobs. And listen, um, already on board with this. The same this, this dude. man is a genius. He, I love it. <laughs> he was like, There's not enough tits in this. Yes. And um I'm gonna add some more. And so he starts writing his own fan fiction of Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, you know what else it needs is Satanism. And dude, um, this guy's the best. Oh yeah, dude, I want to read this version so bad. It sounds amazing. And here's the thing, though. He he like here. It's pretty similar, right? Until it gets to the castle. So Jonathan has be, been renamed Thomas for some reason. Who cares? Uh, who cares? Right? There's boobs, and it takes Thomas Thomas Jonathan. I'm just gonna say Harker. It takes Harker, Harker way longer to realize he's a prisoner. Because he just spends time like being horrified left and right in Dracula's castle by all these things that are going on, including the three vampire chicks are gone, right? But they're replaced oh, with Dracula's. Them? No, but they're replaced by another one. Dracula's 
female relative named Josephine, who may or okay. may not be his niece. He's keeping it Josie. He's keeping it Josie. <laughs> Damn, you beat me to the joke, dude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say he's keeping a Josie. He's anyway. keeping a Josie. Okay. So Josie is like this may or may not be his niece, but she's super hot and she's immortal and sexy. And she gets Harker all like, Ooh, you know, like uh, obsessed with her. And, like um, Auga style, like Auga, eyes popping yes. out of his head. Where and he's, he's like, like he turns into a wolf for a moment and <laughs> yeah. just bangs the Auga. table. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. He uh, he can't keep his eyes off of her because Josie just tits out all the time. Just nothing. Nothing on top. And uh, she'll be either covered in blood or diamonds and, um, you know, classy. You know, but this sounds cool because it sounds like he didn't just arbitrarily say it takes him a long time to realize that he's being held captive. It's like all of these things are what any normal, not nor I shouldn't say normal, but like most of us who are a little bit insane would just be like, what? This yeah. is metal as shit. What yes. the hell is that? This is awesome. Wait, <laughs> well, I'm a prisoner? Am I sure? I don't know. Maybe. Do I like, like uh... this? <laughs> yeah. I might like it here. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> so I love Voldemort. I love him so much. Uh, so Osmond, Osmondson, Waldemar Osmondson spends a lot of time talking about boobs. Like a lot of it is like describing boobs, what they look like, who yes. has them, yes. what are they wearing. <laughs> it's it's hot. Uh, and he, <laughs> Harker wanders around at night and finds a basement filled with other vampires. And okay. can, you, can you guess what they're doing in there? It, each other. Orgy. <laughs> yeah. So this has way more vampire orgies and satanic rituals, like literally praising and worshiping Satan in the basement. I don't after know their if orgy. I can make it to the end of this tab without like busting out and wanting to read the entire thing in one <laughs> fell swoop. <laughs> Simmer down. Yeah. <laughs> so, <gasps> I'm all hot and bothered. <laughs> I'm a little bit too, to be honest. <laughs> We should get a Dracula. We should get Josie on our podcast, but not the ones we know. We should get the hot vampire Dracula. One. I think we both... Dracula vampire niece. <laughs> We'd both explode. <laughs> <laughs> We'd both just like, oh no. Okay. So uh... <laughs> another huge difference is that Dracula will not shut up about politics. So he's just listen. It's got a little bit of everything. You can go look yeah. at boobies, and then you can go discuss politics with somebody. Which you know me, I love to debate for sport. I don't even care yeah, if I like agree same. with. The... It's I love just politics. Fun to argue. Yeah, boobs, politics. So far, I'm on board. Yeah. All right. And he's. You don't have to pay to be there. I'm assuming, right? Like you're being held no. captive. Like this sounds great. I'm his guest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, waiting to see where this is like bad yeah, for anyone. At I'm any deciding point. when I'm not into this anymore. Yeah. And so far I'm into it. Uh, maybe not watching people get sacrificed because they did do that a lot too. So mm. um, I mean, I could just go in the other room. I don't have to watch it. You know, maybe there's something on TV I can go check out. Right. Just watching TV at an orgy. That's that's yeah. your that's your <laughs> that's that's what you do. I feel like that would be a good <laughs> slug Band if name? I ever. I don't know if I ever got back onto like the dating apps, God forbid, but if I ever oh. had to, I'd be like, I'd be the, I'm watching TV during an orgy would be like my little <laughs> slug one. line. So he can't shut up about politics and he can't shut up about how much he hates Christians. So he would have loved Reddit, like just thrived on Reddit. Hates, this is he's like just, our goth king right now, basically. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but he's a little bit like, like, athe like the atheist in the way that it's like, all right, I get it. Oh, I we get, get that you don't believe in God. Like I get know. it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if and, it's like a hundred years ago, it's a little bit like it's a little bit more forgivable because right. at that time that was like new to like really be like that. Oh to yeah, that extent that's a new. No thing. one was ever out saying yeah. like I don't believe in God. And Darwin cool. Darwinism is like very recent. Uh, yeah, it's true. And speaking of Darwinism, that is all the book talks about is that Dracula is a huge proponent of social Darwinism, which means the weak need to be. Um, destroyed and the strong mm -hmm. need to rule. Mm -hmm. And all he talks about is that. And he starts, Dracula's like, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take over Europe and I'm in with all these governments. And he's got um, like, he's. Yeah, see, now it, it's starting to it's sound getting like Hitler. insufferable. Oh, very <laughs> insufferable, dude. He yeah. won't stop. He's just like, I'm going to get. The reason I want a mansion in London is so I can have a secret society where we plot to overtake all the European countries and. Bro, and just stick to boobies and right. like. Complaining about good. politics, like that's all we need as human beings. Yes, that's it. <laughs> and TVs during an orgy, you can that's watch fine. TV during an orgy. That's you, all we want. You, you gotta take a break from the orgy. <laughs> People are never; they can never be happy with what they've got. That's the sad part. So yeah, he won't shut up about any of that. And um, mm -hmm. 
he organizes these secret societies and he wants property in London. So here's the funny part is that in this one, the property in London is like this rundown garbage house in the east end of London. <laughs> Whereas like in the original, it's his mansion, you know. Yeah. And so he wants to live in this like slum. <laughs> and He's a take shrewd over investor. Europe. <laughs> yeah, because he understands that if he goes in there, it'll raise the property value of everything around it. He understands. He's going to snatch yeah. everything up. You don't go mm-hmm. buy the most expensive real no. estate. No. You don't go where it is. He has you go that where it's in Transylvania already. Yeah, he has exactly. his beautiful castle. Now he Makes needs sense. his just disgusting hole in the wall in England. Flop house. Yeah. <laughs> Flop house. Exactly. So he. The th- okay, here's the thing. This this whole Valdemar's is all set up in two parts. And mm-hmm. the first part is Jonathan's adventures to the castle. And it's it's told from his point of view. So he completely changed how the story was told. Okay. It was not through diet. Like, it wasn't through, like, notes or letters. It was through Jonathan's diary firsthand. Yeah. Okay. And, or Thomas's or whatever. Right, right. And that is 80, that whole section, this, the castle part with the orgies and, and the, the ladies is 80%. Of this book. <laughs> All right. If you remember, there's the whole part where they have to still kill Dracula and go to England and like Mina it's and the Lucy. the last 10% where he just It is the it last in. 20% where he like shoves in. He's like, oh, shoot. I got to actually say what oh, happened. I forgot. <laughs> I got to stop my smut. Got to stop writing smut and actually get to the point. <laughs> and he ends up Deranged. shoving the last stuff into like 60 pages. Whereas... First of all, the original book is like 500 pages. Who of us has not done this? Uh, I did that today. Yeah. I did that today with this tab. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> the original book was like 500 pages, and he got the whole thing down to like 250 pages or something. So he cut out like so much stuff. <laughs> and then he added Again, a few. An, an excellent thing to do that I wish most scripts would do these days. Cut yeah. them down. They don't need to be three-hour movies. They, they can don't. be 90 minutes. There's so much conversation that doesn't need to be had that can just be no. shown. And there's so like, many more vampire tits that we could be seeing so, in everything. Dude, that's all we want. That's all we want. Keep it Josie. <laughs> it's <laughs> suddenly, got a whole new meaning Suddenly now. keeping it Josie is very <laughs> <Yeah>. different. <laughs> sorry, Josies. Yeah, sorry, Josies. I'm truly, truly sorry. Sorry. Um, so he... <laughs> So the second half is like 60 pages and he just kind of is like, oh, and then like, yeah, Dracula goes to England to start a secret society yeah, and like, there's uh... Van Helsing and there's this chick named Mina and and she's actually, pre- he actually like treats the women like equals because at the time Iceland was really advanced with women's rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were already giving women the right to vote and to like serve in um, government positions and stuff. Cool. So yeah, they were on that. So Lucy and... No, they changed the name to Lucy Western instead of Lucy uh, Western. Eastern? That, <laughs> instead of U- Lucy Northern, yeah. Uh, Eastern, yeah. Van Helsing is just like this footnote. <laughs> it's just like, oh, this guy comes. And they, they all capture Dracula in his house in London and kill him. So there isn't... It makes more sense, yeah. It makes way more sense, I guess, yeah. And here's the thing. I, the, so here, the, the article I read had so much more that I... That I can't even get into, and I would want okay. everyone to go click on the article in, yeah. in in the description because it's so well written, so well done, and it gets deeper into all of this. But here's a crazy thing that happened in 2017: uh-huh. is they took the new manu- the new old manuscript, and they're like, "We're going to translate this back into English, but it's going to be the Icelandic version, which was called oh. Macht Mirkuna, which is Icelandic for Power of Darkness." Which is nice. from one quote in the original book where they say something about power of darkness. So they, they, they decided to translate Macht uh, Mirkana into English and it caught the attention of this guy named Hans de Roos. So Macht Mirkana, uh, it turns out, was lifted from an, an earlier version of this. So a lo- another lost version in Swedish. Of Dracula? So they have these, of Dra- of Dracula, the Swedish Dracula, which was lost. And then they realized <laughs> later that that was, that, that Valdemar's isn't even the original fanfic. It's the Swedish one. So it's one. a fanfic of a fanfic? Yes. <laughs> what? Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> so the Swede, I know. So the Swedish one kind of got lost, but it was also published in a newspaper and it was called it was that one was called Mor Mor Machter, which uh translates to power of darkness. And then it everybody's like, so wait, where did this actually come from? 
So they start looking into because Bram Stoker did have some earlier drafts. And so they were like, yeah. did they somehow get a hold of an earlier draft? Yeah. And they find it. They find his earlier drafts. And there are characters in there that he cut, but that are in the Swedish and Icelandic versions. Oh, so okay. somewhere down the road, they think that somehow, probably the Swedish person, got a hold of a manuscript, an early manuscript of Dracula, and then just y- lifted characters out of there and kind of did their own thing with them. So it went through these this bizarre like telephone, you know, yeah. telephone game where we don't actually know how this story came came to be. No one really knows. There's no documentation. And Valdemar said it was based on a true story. That was another weird thing. He said it was by Bram Stoker and that it was based on a true story and that names had been changed to protect privacy, <laughs> which is wild. And uh, to this day, we don't know. Did they ever find know. out who the person was that translated the Swedish version? No. It was, uh, okay. he signed his name A.E. He or she signed their name A.E. in the newspapers. Mm. And they have some ideas maybe that match the initials, but we don't really know. Wow. Uh, so, oh, and then another cool thing is a linguist was reading through the Icelandic version and they started mm-hmm. thinking, this seems like this was translated from another Nordic language, not from English. So there's like little linguistic markers that were yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not from English, that's from another Nordic language. And it would make sense that it was from the Swedish one. So that, that is the wild and a weirdly erotic story of the, the Icelandic uh, Icelandic Dracula, Macht Markina, Mirkina. Um, so this was only 2014, you said that they finally yeah. actually figured this out? Yeah. And then it's been translated to English now. Uh, you can my, buy it. You can buy it. And my first question is, is like, who's bought the rights to this? And is there a film being made of Icelandic Dracula? That's what I wanted to know. That's uh, what I'm curious about. I'm pretty sure it's in the public domain. Well, so. yeah, if it's 100 years old, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, I just mean, like, is anyone trying to make it, I guess I should say. Ooh. You're, I looked a lot of places, and there isn't very much about this. Like that article I found is probably the most comprehensive and I didn't see anything about a film or anything, but dude. That sounds awesome. I would love um, it. <laughs> that was anyway, that uh, went faster that an, than I thought. That was an excellent tab. I, I really, Thank really you. enjoyed that. That was really strange. And I think that yeah. our linguistics tab on the uh on the Discord is gonna go ape shit with that one. Yeah, they're gonna love it. They're gonna be very excited about this. Uh it's super cool. I, I'm genuinely fascinated yeah. by that one. Um, well, thank it's you. your turn, you dude. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for the tab. That was a great one. But I do really want to, again, we have this list of a thousand movies that we're going to sit and watch like, in honor of, <laughs> of the podcast. Um, yeah. That one, I, I guess I won't explain it to you in case we ever watch it, but in terms of like you the can. stuff, it's, it, nothing's really, ch- it's not like changed so much as like certain things are emphasized more than others. Okay. Um, in the story, but it, it's very cool. I really like it. I, again, it's an acquired taste. I know not everybody loves that adaptation of Dracula, but I don't know if they're like purists or whatever. I don't. Uh, um, I don't have any like morals. Uh, any opinions yeah, I know. or morals? Yeah. Morals. Gone. Nothing. Um, I read. Ma- okay. I read Mock Mirkana, and I don't have morals anymore. So, That's cool. Uh, That's what vampire movies will do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you're also fixated on that part because I was. <laughs> I was like, Wah! why would I not be? Yes. I know. Wow. <laughs> anyway, your turn. Okay. So my tab today is an interesting one. Um, oh. And not in the way that you would probably think. So okay. as you know. <laughs> I don't know what to expect know, uh, from you ever. You shouldn't know. You shouldn't know. <laughs> uh, this is going to be even more unexpected. So as you know, I am a Middle Eastern mm-hmm. individual. My family's from yep. Iran. And mm-hmm. don't worry, it's not a tab about Iran, but I'm just letting you know I, this is the context whatever. of who I am. And, you know, we always hear the same old yeah. story. America and the West is only interested in oil. That's why they're there, which is mm-hmm. mostly true because <laughs> I was gonna America. Say. Yeah, it's pretty correct. It's pretty, um, pretty true. Yeah, pretty spot on. So, <laughs> you know, because America and every other powerful nation throughout history has always been obsessed with stealing another country's natural resources. That's not mm-hmm. exclusive to us. That's just the thing that's been happening <laughs> forever, it's, basically. We do it to everybody. Don't go everybody thinking it's does just it. you. Yeah. Other people have done it to other people. America didn't invent this, yeah. but we've certainly perfected it. <laughs> and 
That's what I always say about the slave trade. People are like, other yeah. people were slavers. I'm like, yeah, but the Europeans really perfected really it. Really did. Yeah, they yeah. nailed it to a specific uh, level of efficiency. And, and, and all yeah. this feels very base and kind of like, yeah, obviously. But that's the name of the game. But this is America, right? This is America. Yes. We will do whatever it takes to win because we're winners. Yes. Whatever CIA operation we must deny, whatever whatever spin we must propagate, whatever insane law that we must pass, we will do it because we are winners and we will stay on top. USA, USA, USA. That's all I got energy for. That's all you need because today I'm going to talk about one of those batshit insane laws. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Appropriately titled the Guano Islands Act of 1856. Oh, we're going back to the 1850s. Also, Your guano, favorite. like bat poo? So, yes. Or not. Bad. Yeah. Sorry. No, I've, no, no, no. You're not sorry. You're you're correct. So if you're, I was going to say, if you're like me, everything you know about guano comes from Ace Ventura when nature calls. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Shikaka, all that. <laughs> bat poo. I thought I need to rewatch that movie. Like that. I have not seen it for probably 20 years at least. Same. Uh, yeah. I have no idea Hopefully if it holds, it holds up. up. Fingers crossed. We'll see. Uh, but yes, I was exactly like you, like Chicago. Uh, and I, through the research of this tab, I was devastated to learn that the film was, in fact, not 100% accurate, uh, save for oh. one fact. Guano okay. is indeed extremely valuable. And oh, it doesn't necessarily have to be bat poop. Oh, is this about selling poop? It also comes from seabirds, which is what we'll be focusing on today. <laughs> okay. This is gonna get weird. <laughs> All right, I, I'm already going down this weird like tunnel. It's like oh yeah. bat poop, seabirds. So wait, yeah. guano. When you say guano, that means is it like any kind of flying animal poop or just poop in general? Uh, I believe it has to do with birds and like, fl- I, okay. I don't know if it's all bird poo, but I know specifically for what I did, I didn't go down like the super deep rabbit hole of like all kinds of classification, but from what I can tell it said seabirds and like bats. So it has something to do with their oh, okay. digestive tracts. So okay. obviously I'm not a farmer as you can tell, but uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I can explain what to you. What did your mom say? <laughs> you have, hands of a you prince. have the hands of a prince who's never worked a day in his life because I don't have rough <laughs> hands. I have soft artist hands. No, she said artist hands. She's like, you have artist hands, which she's she's 100 percent correct. I'm not good with manual. Oh, labor. So do I. I will supervise the shit out of a uh, manual labor yes. organization. But I, yes, you, you give will. me like a pickaxe. I'm like, eh, I don't know what to do with it. It's not how my brain works. I'm the opposite. I would collapse if someone put me in charge of a mine. Yeah. You're but the... if they're like, dig, I'd be like, dope. <laughs> you're a digger. Should we start mining? Yeah. I could supervise the entire thing. I could make sure yeah. that it's all on task and on schedule and we get a lot of you know resources from it and make it exciting. We already do that with the podcast. Exactly. So never mind. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so just a quick primer onto why guano is so based, which in this case, we're talking about Peruvian guano. Oh, okay. Oh. So guano. It's not guano unless it's from Peruvia. I guess that's only authentic <laughs> Peru- Peruvia, my favorite country in all of South America. <laughs> America. Guano is particularly rich in nitrogen and phosphorus, which basically means it has fossy jaw. Oh. Yeah. And hey, call back. Yeah, this is important for farmers because much like Brondo, it's got what plants crave. Remember that thing I was explaining <laughs> to you? Yes. <laughs> it's go. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a shout out to Idiocracy for anybody who's not seen that movie. Um, uh, as the crops Maybe. grow in the ground, they absorb these nutrients naturally from the soil. But if you're trying to stay in one place and grow stuff like over and over again, you run the risk of depleting all that good stuff from your land. And uh, yeah. this is where fertilizer comes in. And it's like giving your soil that vitamin smoothie it needs in the morning in order to fight off like anemia or a crippling vitamin B deficiency. Mm-hmm. Except with this smoothie, there is poop in it. It's poop smoothie. Listen, I, I would not put it past <laughs> half these people in Los Angeles to start being like, yeah, shit is really good for oh, like yeah. your bowel movements. Although there's like poop I would transplants and stuff. I know that. Yeah, dude. I've looked at that because about not not to do it, but I've heard about poop transplants. Yeah. It's like it like resets your stomach or, or your bowels or whatever. Yeah. So it's not there's some truth to it, but your your run of the mill manure. So I don't know. I I, I was re again, I tried not to get too much into the sciencey stuff because I get overwhelmed very quickly and I'm not smart. But <laughs> 
I will leave it Same, to dude. I will leave it to the <laughs> listeners to sort of like fill in the appropriate statistics here. But <laughs> okay, uh, basically, let's just say there's not a lot in regular manure in terms of like okay. how much nitrogen and phosphorus is in it. Uh, but a little bit of guano can get up to like a whopping twenty percent nitrogen and four like four or five percent phosphorus. So it's it's Fossigia. significant. Like it's like at least three or four times as much, and it's much less. So it's much more concentrated oh, wow. in the amount that it's in. Again, you're thinking 1800s, where you're, yeah. you're throwing you know cow manure on there, and this is something that's smaller. It's much more potent. So, whoa. So um, it's valuable. It's very valuable. And so the, then the next question I had was, was like, well, so why are guano nutrient levels so high up? Like they're in the top 1% sailing around on sinking yachts and getting attacked by orcas. What's the deal? <laughs> As they should. Yeah. We need the sacrifice. Exactly. To the, to the ocean. Again, not a scientist, but from what I can understand, Aww. birds don't pee in the same way that mammals do. Did you know this already? Right. Uh, here's I'll tell you why I knew this. Okay. Is because <laughs> having a kid, I have a kid. I have two kids. That's a bird. And one, one of them, of them <laughs> one of them's a bird. And it really hurt coming out uh, with the beak. Uh, no, I, oh, I just like closed up. Ah! Um, sorry. Oh, uh, what was I saying? You were talking I about. Just reset myself. Oh, why so you know that kid, birds don't have. Uh, sorry. Yes. Continue. My kid was like, she's at the age where she's like, why this and why that? And yeah, wants yeah. to know literally everything. And she knows that Google is a thing that I can look up pictures of things. Mm -hmm. So one day she comes up to me and she's like, what does a what does a chicken vagina look like? And I was like, I've never uh, thought to look. I'm curious now. Too. I don't know. Wait, and we... so I looked it up. No, I'm going to tell you. OK. And they don't have one. They have oh. a cloaca. Yep. There you go. They have a cloaca, which is a both, a bothy. A bothy. Yes. <laughs> Poops and peas out of the same hole. You got it right. That's exactly what I was going to say. And urine nice. tends to be where a lot of, like, obviously, like, nitrogen and all that stuff is stored. Oh, didn't know that. Um, not stored, but it, it's where it tends to be. <laughs> when it's processed in the body, it ends up mostly in uh -huh. your urine more than it does. Which is not to say it doesn't end up in your poo as well, but it's mostly in the urine. So Okay. And because birds, I guess, don't even have bladders, so they don't store urine. In huh? the it's like you don't have, like, a bunch of pee, and then you hold it, and then you pee out. It just... Whoa. It gets processed just... all weird and then it gets mixed with the Dying. feces and then comes out, as you said, in the cloaca. Um, yeah. So it all comes out as one. It's not like two separate areas. And cloaca is also, like you said, where they uh, give birth or like, lay, not give birth, but like lay yeah. eggs. It's it's like one magic hole where everything happens in it. So <laughs> One magic hole. Um, and so the reason why this is significant is because it retains all of the, you know, everything that's in there, all those nutrients. And because in Peru, like coastal Peru around that area, uh, it's very yeah. dry. And so the guano doesn't get, uh, when it's left behind on the sides of the Island, it doesn't get washed away by like rain or humidity or anything oh. like that. It all stays like intact. Um, caked on there. Exactly. It gets caked and it retains everything and it piles up and it gets really high over time. And then pretty soon, bam, you got, a cookie dookie <laughs> <laughs> or dookie cookie, depending on how you want to go with it. A dookie. A dookie cookie. Yeah, the dookie. <laughs> Speaking of L.A., yeah. that's going to be a new bakery somebody opens up. Uh, somebody has like a pazuki like at BJ's, but this is the, do <laughs> the dookie. <laughs> Padookie. Mm, that's insulting to pazuki. <laughs> anyway, um, as you might expect... <laughs> This episode's insane. It is. <laughs> like, As opposed to what every I, uh, other episode that's totally normal. Well, th this one's just maybe a little bit more... Unhinged? Uh, I don't know. Unhinged? Yeah. It's going to get even weirder. So Really? Yes. It's Okay. So as you might expect, locals in the area in Peru were like, yeah, obviously, like they've known about this for centuries. Like the Incans, Incan Empire used it and probably even like further back. They're like, yeah, we know. Oh, yeah. Like, we, But maybe they just like didn't realize how good they had it because they were just like, yeah, this stuff's real good. You put it on the crops and it gets a good yield and blah, blah, blah. They were fine. And then until the year 1802, a German explorer and scientist named Alexander von <laughs> Humboldt arrived in Peru. And he okay. was this dude who just, he was like an explorer. He wasn't like a Christopher Columbus explorer. He was okay. more of like a man just going around like learning stuff and being like, oh, this is, I mean, I guess. Oh, uh, cool. I didn't do a super deep dive onto him, but I didn't necessarily see uh, him coming in and trying to kill a bunch of natives. It sounds like he was just like, oh, There that's wasn't cool. like a genocide tab on his um, on his I Wikipedia. didn't see it. Like if I, it was kind of long. I, I, I might have missed it to be fair, but 
No, I think he was just he was doing a bunch of writing and he was like he was kind of like a cool. journalist type person for this like a Darwin. Day. Uh, yeah. So when he got to Peru, uh, he was told the nearby Chincha Islands were deep in layers of bird poo that were massively popular with uh, the Peruvian farmers. And so he went and he saw the <laughs> islands and he like dug up like a little bit of it. And like he wrote a whole thing and then he brought it back with him to Europe with like this small sample. Oh, and no. To be fair, like I said, Alex, I don't think he was like, I don't get the sense that he was trying to be like, let's ruin this. I think he was just like, oh, here's this cool, like interesting thing I found. Like, oh, isn't like it interesting? That the Peru- yeah, scientifically, like the Peruvians have this. That's interesting. Like, we don't have that necessarily. Yeah. I wonder if there's if this is just like he wasn't sure. He was like, I wonder if this is like a thing. And so he brought back the samples and they um, they took it to whatever, a couple farmers and they tested it. I guess some of the crops like allegedly doubled or even like tripled their yield Whoa. as far as what they had. And so the That's next thing you know, like it works. Yeah, it works at least comparatively to what people were using before that. Wow. And so next thing you know, everyone's losing their shit over this A grade, like Peruvian <laughs> bird brick. They're just like, this <laughs> is quality, quality this shit. Is, this is uncut, high quality fertilizer. And by the 1840s, guano becomes a full-blown industry. Full-blown. Oh, uh, it was yeah. Commercially mined, imagine. transported, and sold in Germany, France, England, and eventually the United States. Imagine being the captain of the ship that just brings the bird poo back to England. You know? Not a good job. <laughs> That's all. What if Dracula got on that ship? Yeah, right. And he was just trying to do his transformation, but he can't because it smells so weird. He's like, oh. Uh, he wakes up all strange. Um, Dude, so Dracula you... could have a business. If he transformed into a seagull and just shit <laughs> constantly. Oh, it's like a self perpetuating so business. Yeah, he doesn't even need anybody. Guano. Oh, man. Dracula. Birds are doing it wrong. Yeah, birds should be doing this. They are. Not. Use your own body yeah. to make it. You, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway, that's my my million dollar idea is be a vampire and Listen, also a shapeshifter if, and make my own guano. If any and bird so uh, bird entrepreneurs are listening, bird let listeners. us know. <laughs> For all of our bird listener base, <laughs> please sell your poo. Sell your poo. Uh, so just to give you a sense of the scale, initially 182 tons were shipped to England, <clears throat> but by the 1860s that number oh. rose to 435 thousand tons a year. Yes. Whoa, it's a lot it's of poop. quite a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And because this wasn't something lame like soccer or a functioning healthcare system that only Europeans <laughs> wanted, America was like, dude, <laughs> let me in on that shit, bro. Give me some of that guano. Be- oh, be- because they heard like it was it was doubling or tripling yeah. the yield on crops. But even with the yield boosts, U.S. farmers were pretty pissed off about the price of guano because it was really expensive. There's a guy named Jimmy Skaggs who wrote a book called The Great Guano Rush, and he explains, there's an excerpt from it. It says, in 1850, at a time when a single dollar could purchase a man's tailor-made suit, median agrarian income in the U.S. stood at about $690 annually, representing the return on a hypothetical average farm of 202 acres. However, most American farmers, north, south, and west, actually tilled far smaller tracts of land, fewer than 100 acres, and earned substantially less than $200 annually. Oh. So to expend half that annual income for merely enough bird droppings to fertilize 20 acres was an extravagance many farmers simply could not afford. That is so expensive. It is. It's cra- It's basically half their income That's would have gone to- half your annual? Oh my gosh. And they don't even have the you average buy, like 200, acre, 200 acres. You could buy t- t- 300 suits with that money. Instead, they have to buy guano. They have to buy guano Tuxies, instead. Tuxes. Oh, you know what I forgot is to do? Is that what they said? <laughs> Tuxedo. It's a tailor-made suit. So adjusted for inflation, $200 in 1850 is worth about roughly $8,000 today. Is oh, what their annual income would have been. That's not so, a lot. So if you were spending $15, $50, let's say, on a ton, it was about $2,000. <laughs> oh. Uh, if you were making, but you're making, they're making less than two thousand. They're making less than $200, they were saying. So it's a significant amount of your right. income was being spent on that. And that became the standard where people were like, now that this uh, guano has hit the market, everybody is expected to have that level of return. So they're in this precarious right. position where they don't have enough. The costs are too high. Um, and by, like I said, by 1815, guano accounted for 22% of all commercial fertilizer consumed in the United States. And within 10 years, that number jumped to 43%. And at that time, it went to about $73 a ton. 
Oh, well, and so <laughs> farmers are pissed. That's so. And there's like, yeah. we don't know what to do. We're being priced out. We don't have enough for these resources. And also, uh, there's nothing locally that we can do. There's not a lot of like, you know, seabirds going around shitting in the middle of like right. Idaho. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Actually, there. Here's the thing. Oh, are there? Yeah. So in north, southern Idaho and northern Utah, it, our our state bird in Utah is a seagull, because we oh, have really? the Salt Lake. Yeah. <clears throat> so oh, I was literally just saying on, like, Idaho like randomly, but okay, interesting. I know, but uh, and here I come swooping in with a weird fact. But I the love seagulls it. were swooping in like the seagull I, that you are, shitting and pissing in the same I am. breath. That's a our, <gasps> out my mouth. Is that what you're saying in the same breath? <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> no. Uh, the seagulls would come out at recess and like after we were eating and they would just like swarm the table where we were sitting and eat all of our food. And I was like, we're in a de- we're in a desert. <laughs> and it's the California seagull. That's our state bird. Anyway. So that's the fact. farmers all get pissed and they start lobbying Congress. And at this time, 80%, about 80% of Americans lived on a farm and 75% of the gross national product was tied to agriculture. So whoa, the the fat cats in Washington were like, uh, oh yeah, we're gonna need to do something about Rot this row. because people are gonna like lose their minds. <laughs> we don't want to be overthrown. <laughs> overthrown, exactly. Farmers, and also, wow. also, as you alluded to earlier, ju- not just because of the high price, but because fake guano had started to become a problem. <laughs> of course. So literal shit swindling had become a, like an industry. <laughs> My great grandpa was a shit swindler. So instead of like pure shit, people were getting their <laughs> shit cut with shit. <laughs> oh, like cow and, and other other ones. Wow. What a rip off. So there's a magazine that was published in 1855. It was called The Southern Planter. And they uh, they had an article where they said, quote, we were informed that an article known as Mexican guano was taken to an establishment near Newark, New Jersey, where there they mixed it with plaster, salt, sugar house scum, which I don't know what the hell that is. What is sugar house scum? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> Peruvian guano and quick lime, the whole thing ground up together and put in quick bags. Quick lime? Yeah. Marked Chilean guano. So it's like the drug trade. It's literally like the drug, raid, the drug trade, but with shit. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting into the shit trade. And uh, this goes all the way to the top. With the importance of guano even being mentioned in President Millard Fillmore's first State of the Union address. He talks about <laughs> guano in that. Yes. What does he say? Uh, I didn't pull the whole speech, uh, but it's basically some sort of like he sort of just mentions the importance of it in the State of the Union and being like part of his promises of stuff that he's going to do. I love that. And he does. And he he doesn't actually get it done during his presidency, but it is a process that started. And I forget who the next president is after him, but it gets signed into law. So what what uh, Miller Fillmore does is that he brings a man named William Stewart. aboard, oh. And Stewart was born at the turn of the century, and he grew up on a farm roughly 60 miles northwest of New York City. And oh, okay. much like me, he's not one for manual labor. He's not very good. Um, <laughs> but he does eventually grow up to serve in a life of politics. And But oh. despite that, he grew up and he understood that hashtag farm life. He gets it. He understands how farmers think and how to communicate with yeah. them. And because of that, and like I said, like 80% of the country grew up on farms. Um, he becomes like a very important sort of communicator and translator right. of like what their needs are versus like what the administration can do for them. And he's a politician, an American politician, and he knows how to think outside the box. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, here's the thing. What if instead of leveraging something and negotiating a better deal with the Peruvians for lower prices, oh, no. we just stole land that doesn't belong to us and oh. also doesn't belong to anyone Oh, that's how land, yeah, that's, um, that worked before. Why wouldn't it work again? With this in mind, he spearheaded the titular tab, the Guano Islands Act of 1856, <laughs> which is still in play today, no. by the way. What? Okay. Yep. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Okay. This is so. going to get dumber. 48 U.S. Code Section 1411 states, quote, Whenever any citizen of the United States discovers a deposit of guano on any rock, 
island, or key, not within the lawful jurisdiction of any other government, and not occupied by the citizens of any other government, and takes peaceable possession thereof, and occupies the same such island, rock, or key, may at the discretion of the president be considered as appertaining to the United States. Oh, wait. End quotes. <laughs> I will explain. Basically... It's a land grab <laughs> under the guise of poop manufacture? Like... Exactly. <laughs> If you got bird shit, if you, okay, so if you're sailing around and you see like a little island and it's got bird shit on it and it's in international waters, you can squat there with the blessing of the of POTUS, and now that belongs to the United States. Wait, wait, okay, so <laughs> wait, so so if I I can get on a boat and go find an abandoned island and if there's poop on it, I can say it's mine. You can say it belongs to the United States. Oh. You could say it's ours. You're like, you're now, uh, <laughs> oh, but, oh yeah, one more thing. So Congress <laughs> in that same action deputized every American citizen to claim territory, which as what? far as I can tell had never been done before or since. I don't know. So, <laughs> so you can do that. It's you my can American go. right it's to your quote unquote American claim right territory. <laughs> to claim shit islands. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. It, it it took a lot of technical explanation to get there, but this was the reaction I was hoping for. I'm so happy right now. I I need a poop island. Uh, poop island. That's a, instead of Love Island. No, here we go. I'm gonna have a reality Shh. TV show called Poop Island, and instead of Love Island, we're gonna put a bunch of shit just, on an island. Yeah, and then see who wins. No, we gotta race to the island. Whoever gets the most poop wins. I mean, so this is basically what starts to unfold. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm having a I'm having a reaction. Good. That's what you want. Cue the American flag waving behind us right now, just like <laughs> like this. America, America. And of course, it's America, and it's the 1850s. So oh. <laughs> it starts to get not pretty. <laughs> yeah, people weren't great. People <laughs> weren't great. Yeah, they weren't like nice to other humans and didn't necessarily consider them humans no. or like respect anything. There was some mass, some light massacring happening. Light massacring. <laughs> anyway, so in 1857, Peter Duncan and Edward Cooper of Maryland discovered that Navassa Island off the coast of Haiti held one million tons of guano. That's so much poo. However... The Haitian government felt that Navassa Island was definitely, quote, within the lawful jurisdiction of Haiti. Oh. Regardless of Haiti's claim, Duncan and Cooper <laughs> claimed it for the United States under the Guano Islands Act. Why would it stop us? Why would that? Why would it why be would owned it? by someone stop us? Never did before. President James Buchanan was like, you know what? Duncan and Cooper, solid bros. I approve of this annexation. You've got my full weight behind you. Buchanan. Ugh. That story gets crazy, and I might save it for another day. Okay. Uh, but the the sort of cliff notes you need to know right now is that this this goes on for the course of like well over a hundred years being disputed. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Haitian think... <laughs> the Haitian poop island is takes a hundred years of dispute. To, I, I don't to even out. know if it's still officially like resolved. I think like the last time they brought the case to a court was like 1996 <laughs> or something it was like a long time also a bunch of other horrible shit happens in the in between i oh. again uh i'm so I, happy i okay. had to really like stop myself because it was like this this topic is very broad and like there's i was like every one of these has like really weird stories that you can derive from it um so i tried to keep it like as concise as i could anyway i i reserve the right to maybe look into that at one point yeah. but uh, and of course, as you can imagine, um, it also led to a lot of horrific working conditions yeah. for miners. And you were talking about sailors, people being exposed to like toxicity in the air and like yeah, suffocating it's fumes. It's you're not. It's and it, still it's, poop. They, and it's not like in the 1850s, they've got like, you know, gas masks no. or like, you know, any, they don't have N95 masks and, and stuff not, like that. You're like at raw best, dog maybe and shit like island. A, Literally, you're raw dog and shit, shit island. You're putting like a, a cloth around your mouth at best, but it's also hot and dry like in all oh. these places that there are. 
Uh, and of course, there's a lot of uh, egregious human rights abuses. Of course, there's your run of the mill traditional slavery that was happening at the oh, time. Oh, that's right. With a total disregard for everything. And then it also extended to, um, I guess, what they would call like a, I don't know, this is not a technical term, but it was sort of like bait and switch kind of variety oh, of human yeah. trafficking and slavery uh, that involved Native Hawaiians and uh, oh. Chinese immigrants. Um, yeah. A lot of them had to do with like these weird fake contracts that like said one thing that like didn't specify something. And then when they got there, they were like, oh, guess what? Like we didn't say the start or end date because of translation and you misunderstood this. And now you have to literally like pedal shit for however long that like we tell you to. And basically all these people died and got sick. It's horrific. That tracks. That tracks. It tracks. Yeah. Anyway, it, it just it gets awful. It gets ugly. It gets disgusting. Sad. It gets like terrible. And, um, of course, so then uh, again, another thing that I was like, this is 15 tabs I could have gone into and I didn't go into, but some of the long coastlines of modern Chile came from, uh, after that country invaded Peru to get more guano. Like that was a whole what? thing. So this is like a huge thing in the 1800s. Chile, like, Chile looks like yeah. that because of guano. I mean, I don't know the entire part of it, but like know, that's but... part that starts like some land war with Peru essentially where they take, <laughs> words, take parts of it. It's crazy. <laughs> At its peak, more than a hundred islands were claimed for the United States under the Guano Islands Act. Um, mm. And there's a list. You can see them. You can find it on Wikipedia if you just look up uh, Guano Islands Act islands. Mm. There's way too many to list, obviously. I won't do it but, right now, but I will do it. But they're around Central America, the Caribbean, Micronesia, the Cook Islands, and just generally like out in like the vastness of the Pacific Ocean. There's all Whoa. kinds of places that America just came in and they're like, yep, this is ours now. We got it. That is and nuts. It's nuts. They just went for it. I mean, I and, and again, it's interesting to think about like, there's no, like, this is what's so interesting. I was thinking about this, about like so many of these stories that we end up talking about in the 1800s, at least stuff that I like, yeah. is that it's like, it's this weird meeting point of like the sort of legality and the structure of the modern world with like the industrial revolution and law and patents and all that crap. Um, yeah. But it also still has like the insanity of like what the people old days. thought and like yeah. the old days where people just had no idea because science hadn't like taught them about basic things like you Ooh, shouldn't be mining right. shit for like right. 50 hours a day. And, but like, science gonna, did everyone's teach gonna them die. how to do it. They didn't know what right. they were doing. That's that's yeah. like classic like, you know, the radium girls licking the radium right, right. off of the. Yeah, the fo like, Fosse drive and like yeah. we were talking about too, like same thing. We're too um, smart. So it, well, right, also it's smart, too but still dumb. so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so... Which I still stand by the fact that like we continue to exist in that, but now because it has to do with like tech oh, yeah. and technology being like part of this new structure, but like we're still in sort of this weird old we have insane no paradigm. Idea. And I think uh we'll do that over and over again until the human. We race destroy gets ourselves. Wiped out. Yeah. Exactly. Also, I don't have time to add all 100 islands to the 500 open roads Google Maps I will. list. But if anyone out there, yeah, if you want to do it, or if anyone's got a bunch of time on their hands, let us know. <laughs> you can go sit here and add every single island to it. <laughs> also, I don't know the likelihood of anyone going to visit those islands. They're very far, far yeah. away. Yeah, and you covered. Already, if, yeah, and if you're listening to this, and if you're in Micronesia or the Cook Islands or somewhere around there in like the vastness of the Pacific Ocean, you could probably go and take some pictures. Let us Crazy. know. Predictably. Mm -hmm. By the 1880s, most of the Guano Islands had been mined beyond profit and importing had more or less stopped. Oh, wow. Because it was, it was like a rush, right? We, chipped, just went in and just... we chipped all that poop right off of those islands, huh? Right. And they weren't necessarily, it's like anything, like you're not contributing to the ecosystem. The right. birds are sort of like, what's going on? Like there's <laughs> all these people poo? coming. Where's my poo? And this put pressure on scientists and farmers to come up with some new shit, which eventually led to the invention of synthetic fertilizer at the turn of the century. Oh. Because they're sort of like, uh, we've become used to this thing. Again, all this tech and science stuff is figuring out. Well, um, also again, like the population needs better fertilizer to even be able to eat. Like we can't go back to how we were before. Yeah. We have to figure something out, out to feed exactly. people. Yeah. And the, and they couldn't figure it out and they couldn't like, you know, they're, again, they're not bringing a bunch of seabirds to the States. It wouldn't be able to have been done with that level of, and also the climate. The climate is really specific to all those right. islands where they were. It's like, unless you were to do it in some sort of a controlled environment where you can make sure that like the guano is going into something that's dry, it's it was it wasn't going to happen, especially not at that time. So, scientists come oh. up with some, you know, eventually synthetic fertilizer is invented, which is what we use today. But and again, I'm not Mr. Science type person, but I did read that undiluted man-made fertilizer can go from 
anywhere from like 16 to 45 percent nitrogen, which is like double to triple depending on what the potency Whoa. of the of the guano was. So it's far more far more nutrients in it than guano did, or than guano had. Whoa! So Again, perfected it. I uh, if if there was more science. There was way more science than I could have delved into oh, yeah. uh, hand first like Dr. Ellie Sattler, but I'm not that <laughs> smart. So I'll just leave it to the audience to fact check anything. And they can let us know in a polite and friendly, well, actually email about how all that works. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do know that that uh, that guano is still a pretty big industry. It's still it's like a billion dollar industry or something still to this point. Uh, I would imagine there's still a bunch of stuff in it that like the synthetic doesn't exactly get. Right. right? Like there's some mixture or whatever. Uh, I imagine that particularly in, you know, Peru and all these other places where it was big, it's still like a very important part of the right. GDP and how they grow their plants. And it sort of contributes to, you know, whatever, if they have like coffee, for example, or, right. s- you know, a specific taste or flavor. The taste, that, you know, yeah. Mixes in. Oh. So it's there. It's not like the industry went away. But as far as it being like a gigantic, um, whatchamacallit, industry that like the entire world was was Clamoring with over. For a yeah. Yeah. It's no longer the thing. So- uh, as of today, all but 10 islands claimed under the Guano Islands Act have been withdrawn. Although, as I mentioned earlier, the law is still in play. <laughs> so as an American citizen, you are deputized and it is your God-given right yes. to squat on any island covered in guano and not formally claimed by another nation state as property of these United States of yes. America. And you know what? I'm proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> that is insane. I can't even believe that I could legally do that. You could legally do it. Not only legally do it, but you're encouraged to do it. I, it's part of my rights. <laughs> yeah. The so the president, whoever he or she will be <laughs> by oh. in 2025, will support you. They will support your right to do that. I don't think there's a lot of <laughs> islands left. I'm going to do that, and then it's going to get a ton of press for the podcast. Because yeah. it's going to become a whole thing. You know, Help us get to you know huge following through uh, claiming islands. Yeah. <laughs> that'll look good a white lady claiming an island in the middle Perfect. of like the south pacific yeah <laughs> uh, uh anyway that's, that's my time i loved that i loved <laughs> I that you would. I... <laughs> what a weird world we live in it's like truly strange uh, uh and a lot of people were you. saying that this is sort of the first big Amer- like push for american colonialism like the first like legal uh, oh. uh, structure for it in a way because before that uh, you know it was more about like expanding into the wild west it was right. like kind of continental colonialism if you will right but like this keeping was like it on the continent on the mainland but this outside. is like we're gonna go out Seward wow. by the way I didn't I wasn't gonna get into this because it was too long that guy uh, also helped uh, orchestrate the purchase of Alaska that's how I knew that name and additionally, he was the third person that, uh, what's his name? John Wilkes Booth and whatever the other dude's name was that killed Lincoln. And then yeah. they tried to, I forget who the vice president. Seward was the third guy <gasps> that they tried to kill. What? Okay. Yeah. That's a whole story too. I know. I have a tab open on it. That's how I recognized his name. Oh, about Seward? About, uh, yeah. I, well, I'm not going to tell you because okay. it might be on the docket. I, I really I read like a little bit about like his attempted assassination, which I thought yeah. was really insane and funny. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not yeah. funny, but, you know, it was, it's a little it was ridiculous. Funny. It's a little bit absurd. But yeah, I was like, oh, this guy's got a lot going on. There's, there's a lot of interesting stuff with Seward. Fascinating. Again, I had to keep it to the shit. Um, <laughs> Good thing we have a podcast that gives us free reign to talk about whatever we want. I honestly I love it. Me it's too. The best. It's the best. Um, anyway. Thank you for, for listening to that. I think <laughs> Thank uh, we're you. getting up to our point where we're going to close our tabs. Yeah. What have we got? What do you think? Hmm. Oh, I was so into this. I didn't even send you any pictures. I didn't either. None. Um, That's probably a good sign. So, yeah. Do, do um, we want to do something with, like, birds or the sound birds of Birds shitting poop? and, like, the shit hitting. I don't know. H- hitting, I feel like we've got a lot of yeah. shit stuff. Um, <laughs> Whose fault is that? Ours. Okay? Not mine. <laughs> I've never talked about shit before ever, but this was, I almost like didn't do this. Cause I was like, I talked a lot about, I'm like, people are going to think I'm like brand. obsessed with shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really not that obsessed with shit. I just, I mostly thought like the legality it's of funny. it was like totally insane. Poop's always um, funny. All right. What was, was there something funny from the, uh, I'm like, we can't have vampire tits. That's not really no. a sound effect. No. Oh, 
I'm like, is it weird to have a television playing in the background of an orgy? I don't know yes. how that engages. In I don't think yet. we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to say that right now. How about, uh, uh, oh, how about know. the Wilhel- Wilhelm scream? No, that doesn't make any sense. A ship crashing. How about a ship, that? A ship crashing. Yeah. A shit ship crashing. Or something getting torn apart by a wolf. Okay, let's do that. I think we've actually okay. even used that for the. <laughs> I think we have. The, <laughs> and what's his name? Stump. Stump. Peter Stump. Yeah. Peter Stump episode. We can just well, reuse Alyssa, that one. Well, Alyssa, just recycle it. Recycle it back to the Peter Stump episode of this podcast. Okay, you want to count ready? down? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, nice. Nice. That felt great. I'm closing multiple. Yeah, I had a lot open for this. Oh, me All too. Right. Uh, moving on to listener emails. Uh, I believe you're up first, actually. Um, yeah. Mine is, this email comes from Verena from Aberdeen, Scotland. So that's Ooh, our Scotland. first Scottish person, I think. Hello, tab addicts. I'm, I'm coming to you from sunny Aberdeen, the one in Scotland, not in North Dakota. And while it is currently pissing it down... Aberdeen is the sunniest city in the UK, so that isn't wholly sarcastic. Even if being okay. the sunniest city in the UK is kind of like being the most se- <laughs> the most sexually adventurous girl in the convent. <laughs> okay, I've spent the last few weeks listening to all of the episodes after finally oh. catching up, catching up on musical splaining and discovering oh. it is no more. But I think no I can say I followed both of you here because as a fellow Oh, because as an ex-Mormon, the Book of Mormon episode was my favorite. Oh, very good. That was the episode that Hannah Hillam was a guest on. I was on it. Listen to it now. Uh, I have a truly delightful tab for you today. It concerns the Speaker of the House of Commons, Lindsay Hoyle. The Speaker of the Commons is kind of fundamentally the opposite of the U.S. Speaker of the House, whereas the Speaker of the House is elected by the majority, occasionally in some Thunderdome-style shit. The Speaker... (laughs) The Speaker of the Commons has to come from the opposition party when they are originally appointed, resign their party Mm -hmm. affiliation when they take the job so they can be neutral, Hmm. and have to be elected unanimously. So it always is someone that everyone trusts and is super chill. I kind of like that. That's cool. I kind of like that. I'm into that. Lindsay Hoyle is just such a chill guy and also a noted animal lover. He even met Jonathan, the tortoise. (gasps) And I'm, I like how you gasped, like your breath was a like cotton. Celebrity your sighting. Uh, and unlike v, some pe- Jonathan, and unlike some people, they seemed to get along and have a nice time together. And there's a he photo. Didn't surf on him. He didn't. He was. He got down on his level. And good. And That's how you know this him. guy's level on the level, quite yeah. literally. Yeah. On to my tab. So the Parliament Building is old and right by the Thames, and so it's got five thousand little nooks and crannies where rats and mice sneak in. Your During favorite. the David Cameron government is what is in what it is officially the only good thing that guy did for the country. A few political offices got mousing cats like Larry, and they commissioned a study to see if they could do that for the parliament building. It turns out it would take a small herd of cats for parliament's mousing needs. So it, pretty much parliament is so full it's of ma- mice. Yeah. You see a bunch of cats. Hoyle heard about this news and was like, dope. I've got Battersea dog and cat home on speed dial. Let's do this. But the staffers were like, no, that's too many cats. And he was like, maybe just one cat from my office. And he got Attlee, named after the prime minister who founded the welfare state, Clement M. Attlee. This huge Maine coon that's cute as hell and has a sweet Instagram account. Attlee wanders around all the offices and serves as a therapy cat for tired staffers. Then Hoyle was like, look, this second cat just showed up at my door all hungry and stuff. And so now they also have a slinky black cat named Clement. <sighs> Classic cat owner behavior. Yep. The permanent staffers are still like, Mr. Speaker, we can't have a small herd of cats, but I believe he can slowly wear them down. It's Mm -hmm. just the more eco-friendly mousing solution. I assume that the next two cats will be named Aniran and Bevan, which Aniran and Bevan was the the Welsh dude who started the NHS, the the National Health Care. I like that you know all this. Yeah, dude. There's a huge statue of a nude and Bevan and Bevan in Cardiff that is the most awkward statue on earth, covered in bird poo, and like nice. slightly leaning. It looks like he has to poop his pants. Anyway, anyway, thanks for the many hours of good times with unhinged historical retellings. Keep it Josie, Verena. P.S. My boyfriend works in tech support and wanted me to tell you: Are you history's greatest monsters? Haven't yep. you ever heard of bookmarks? What yep. is wrong with you people? But, like, don't take that too seriously. 
here's the thing. Bookmarks are a, a black hole. You put them in a bookmark, yeah. they're gone forever. You'll never see them again. You'll never exactly. see them again. Out of sight, out it's of like mind. Visual book bookmarks, being able to actually see stuff. I love that they're the speaker of the House of Commons is a cat guy, and he just brings cats in. Amazing. Great. I'm sure there's people there that absolutely love that and would love <laughs> to go to work with a bunch of feral cats running around the offices, <laughs> and it would really help them focus. Uh, they'd love to hear cats meowing at them and snoring and generally just being a delight. I like that we have your side of this as well, because to me, I'm like, oh, delightful. And then it's nice to hear the other side of the coin. It's they're fine. Yeah. Cats are fine at they're work. Fine. Maybe I don't not. I don't care. OK. Uh, email number two is from Jay. Hi, I'm JWX on the discord. Oh, hey. Thank you. Oh, by the Hello, way, JWX. Verena is also on the discord. Oh, no I, shit. Awesome. Yeah. Join the Discord if you haven't. Yeah. That's where all the cool conversations are happening. Anyway, mm -hmm. hi, I'm JWX on the Discord, and I have beef with the mass advertising machine. Hmm. You and us both. Uh, if you've turned on a TV or been in a space where you could be advertised to, you've probably seen ads for Loom or mm -hmm. other, quote, full body deodorant products. Uh, I mm -hmm. can't say that I have, Hannah, because I don't smell like death. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite death. Yeah. I, I Listen, smell. I Hannah, smell. What did you say your mom said? You look like death. Like, That's what you look like a corpse. <laughs> you look like a corpse. I'm sorry. I don't smell like a corpse. Is what she's I always she's always like, put some like blush on. You look like a corpse. And I'm like, mom, I'm just a white person. That's you why just I look put on, like, like a corpse. Even more like white, like <laughs> make it look even more corpsey. <laughs> oh, good idea. Uh, yeah, I get the ads for Loom all the time. And you know what? I, I fell for it, seen it. And I bought really? one. And oh, guess no. what? I'll tell you after. Go. Okay. Uh, they're going to say, I've been inundated with them like a child in a proverbial candy store. It's so excessive. And for what? I don't even know anyone who uses these products. So I opened a tab about it, except for Hannah Hillam, of course. I don't use it. Um, I bought it. Yeah. Oh, you bought it, but you never use it. I see. No. Oh, I used it, but I don't anymore. In the process, I learned a lot about science, about the science of sweat and its relationship with the way we smell, but also that when it boils all down to it, these ads are designed to surprise sell stuff to people who don't need it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's entirely superfluous, but number of dollars needs to go up. Um, I pulled the tab in order to have some facts. So it says, quote, the sweat in our armpits is different, quite different from the sweat that covers your body, says Andrew Best, a biological oh. anthropologist who studies sweat at the oh. Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts. Imagine, imagine being a sweat studier. At a liberal arts college. Listen, all he needs to do is come watch the two of us while we were recording in 100 yeah. degree heat with like, these headphones over our ears. And he'll just be like, yep. this is not why I got into sweat studying. This is too much. <laughs> I didn't go to sweat school for this. Yeah. yeah, I didn't go to four <laughs> years of sweat school just to watch idiot podcasters sweat and scream. Uh, he goes on to say, that's because the rest of your body is covered with uh, ecrine, sweat glands, oh. ecrine, exrine, esrine, ecrine. It looks like it's ecrine. Apologies. Uh, with ecrine sweat yeah. glands, whose product is a more watery, salty liquid that's less appealing to bacteria, but mm. does a bang up job of keeping us cool. Yes, it does. Ecrine sweat is what covers most of our body during exercise. It might occasionally evoke recently ingested food and drink uh -huh. with particular piquant notes after a garlic bread binge or a very boozy night. Whoa. Still, because it's not well suited for bacterial consumption, ecrine sweat doesn't just doesn't usually generate the odors that uh, ap apocrine, apocrine, ap apocrine, I think apocrine. apocrine sweat does. So the armpit sweat, it doesn't make you smell like that one. Yeah, your body doesn't Whoa. make you sweat. It's your armpit sweat. And also, it's like all under your armpit and hidden and dark. So I think that's probably where more bacteria can generate. <laughs> forbidden. It's not getting sunlight. Forbidden sweat. It's the forbidden uh, sweat. Don't touch it. Uh, dash JWX. And they go on to sign the uh, the email. But of course, uh, if you're interested in reading more, it's a Vox article. We'll include yeah. the um, the letter in the notes. Sorry, Dude, the article in this show Loom notes. Loom is such a racket. Every I got some because I was like, oh, that sounds good. First of all, it doesn't even work on your armpits. Not at all. It's just okay. like, anyway. And then they sell insane flavor, not flavors. <laughs> flavors. Maybe that's why it's not working because you're trying to eat deodorant the entire I time. I ate the whole stick and I still smelled. Uh, they have like insane. I bet your inside smelled great though. Mm, that sure. That sounds weird. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You think my insides smell great. Thanks. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, 
You gonna be okay? No, um, you ate deodorant. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> no, it or just doesn't drank work. Drank deodorant. I don't know what it's like. No, I'd see, you eat it. It's a cake. Uh, I the, yeah, only, one of the, the only one I remember is Axe. Is Axe is still around, right? They have like the full body yeah, deodorant. Yeah. Do spray. you not? Do you not wear deodorant? I do wear deodorant. I don't oh, use like okay. the full body one though. I only use. Oh, I actually don't wear antiperspirant. I've only worn. Fun fact: yeah. This is a disgusting story, but I'll say it. But I used to wear antiperspirant no. when I was younger, and then I read about like all the aluminum and like. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not like a person who's like I don't wear anything, and then I smell bad. I just was like I don't like the. I was like the concept of antiperspirant seems just yeah horrible for your body. Oh um, yeah, it seems like putting yeah. a, like a plug in your butt and your urethra and be like <laughs> I'm just not gonna shit or piss because it smells weird. It just felt like I was like this is terrible, uh, and I'll, I'll never forget like I. Once I stopped using antiperspirant for like the first couple months, it was like my armpit smelled like death. And it was yeah. because all this stuff that <laughs> yes. had never gotten out of my body came out. And I was like, oh, yep. so yeah, I do not wear any perspirant. I do wear deodorant. But uh, yeah, anyway, now it's become I, smell uh, vision for everybody on the YouTube. I Loom has like flavors that I'm not saying I'm going to say flavors. One of them is like pumpkin spice. And I saw that and I was like, no. No. Why would I ever use pumpkin it? Spice use deodorant. Pumpkin spice deodorant? like truly hits the back of my throat makes me want to puke Uh, but no it's not a spray it's a it's a stick you just rub the stick all over your body which i didn't do stick on your body i use it for my armpits but people use it for like crotch and stuff like seems so weird doesn't seem right i don't seem uh, right i I wouldn't rub a stick on my body for deodorant that seems unless they want to sponsor us yeah that's true in which case we will absolutely peddle your crap we don't care I will literally shill anything at this point. Um, yeah, and he, he'd shill guano. Uh, listen, am I trying to stop my like wrists from sweating? Like, what? What is the? I don't. I can't. Thighs. My head's gonna explode. Inner thighs. Your thighs. Okay, yeah, inner like, thighs. I guess. With but that's women, like with talcum get the ch- powder the and whatever. Thigh rub or whatever. Be. That's right. Yeah. Just, <laughs> talc- yeah. Are you eighty? <laughs> yeah, like me. <laughs> <laughs> Talcum powder on it. Put a little talcum powder on there. A <laughs> little bit of guano in the back of your ears, and you'll be good as new. Put a little bit of cocaine on your gums, you're fine. Cocaine on your gums. Get back to work. Mining guano. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on that note, uh, I'm if glad you we have... can both do that accent. It's good. I, it's a fun one. Um, why don't you That's... tell everybody yeah. how to submit stuff to so, us? So, yeah. If you want to submit um, one of your own tabs or deep dives just email us at 500 open tabs at gmail.com the number is 500 open tabs and uh, if you want to follow us on patreon we got a bunch of fun exclusive stuff on there including an ama that's super fun and uh we have a discord and that's yeah. going to be linked and uh also we have a youtube channel where you oh, can watch yeah. all of this uh, um we're trying to make a push by the end of the year to reach again we're very small uh, it would be great. Most of our traffic comes from the podcast, but we'd like to grow the YouTube channel more. Yeah. Uh, if you can help us reach like just a thousand followers. It's not That's that our many. goal. Yeah. If, our goal is if to, you enjoyed subscribers, this, not followers. Sorry. If you enjoyed this episode, that is the best way you can help us is just to yeah. follow and interact with things on YouTube and Instagram. But yeah, please. Even if just you don't watch it on then, YouTube. Yeah. Just, just. Put, so, just subscribe and then mute us. It doesn't matter yeah. if we can reach like a certain number. If we just reach like a thousand right now, we'll get like... You know, they'll they'll tell us we're nice people and they'll tell us that we smell good and we don't need deodorant. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you if you uh, share this show with somebody that you know that you like that you think they would like it, if someone shared this show with you, keep please keep it going and share it with someone else that you think they might like. We're we're trying to push yeah. out as much as we can and spread by uh, word of mouth. Especially um, people if, who love Dracula. There's a lot of them. Send this Dracula. Episode. If you love bird. Yeah. Pee poo. Yeah. Uh, if you Cloaca love fans, cloacas, Perfect. if you want to take over islands, listen, yeah. I'm now a legal advisor to everybody who listens to this podcast. You can take over an island if there's poo on it and if there's yeah. nobody else that's claimed it. Yeah. Additionally, of course, we are at 500 open tabs on Instagram. Uh, I'm at Perma Friends on Instagram. And then you're at Hannah Hillam. Ha- at Hannah well. Hillam. And then, uh, um, at- yeah, we're going to be in New York Comic Con in, yep. uh, in October. So October 17th okay. through the 20th. We'll be yeah. in uh, Artist Thursday Alley. Thursday through Sunday. We'll be in Artist yeah. Alley. We'll be sharing a table together. Come say hello if you're in the area. Yeah. Or if you're not in the area, figure out a way to get to New York and then come into the into the convention and come say hi to us. We will be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> we'll we, be we won't acceptably be manic. interesting. 
We'll not be at fine. All. We don't ever get that way. No, not at all. Certainly not uh, oh, when we're in uh, New York. And I have, <laughs> I have a book coming out on yeah. October eighth, Cat People, and uh, I have a bunch of signings set up. So if you are in the Palo Alto area or the San Francisco area, uh, I have signings on the eighth and ninth, and I can put more of, of this October. on October. Of October, yeah. Yeah. And then I'll be in Pasadena on the 29th of Romans. And uh, then Salt Lake, I just added a new one. Salt Lake oh, nice. on November 1st at the King's English. The and, King's English. Yeah. That's exciting. And there's some other ones. Oh, Powell's, Portland. Powell's in Portland on the um, 26th at 7 p.m. And wow. there's some other ones that I didn't remember. There's a bu- That's a lot already. You're it's literally doing like a world tour too many. Like as a musician. Yeah. No, enjoy it. You're gonna never uh, experience. It's never your gonna first happen again. Tour. No, I mean you're never gonna have your first book tour ever again. That's true. It's gonna okay. be your first and you know, hopefully not last. But yeah, thank you guys for listening. Come check us out. Follow the yeah. links. Share, etc. YouTube. Subscribe to YouTube. YouTube. Please subscribe Please. to YouTube. Please. Please subscribe to the YouTube. Don't even watch it. Just subscribe to it. Yeah. Just subscribe. Uh, and until then, Segundus Nixon shat guano five times here <gasps> and increased the value and the crops oh. yielded triple. <laughs> Nothing to add to that. Perfect sign yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Till next week. Bye. Bye.